Scotty, beat me up. First episode, Punk Rock Geek Den. Here we are, boys. Hopefully a historical moment. I, I, I hope so. I think so. I think we're ready to go. Gentlemen, <clears throat> they, will say, they will sing about this day in songs of millennia to come. <laughs> I think they're going to be they will, like they'll, fast they'll, and they'll, loud they'll... songs about like... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> About yeah, rebellion. Punk rock minstrels will yeah. write songs about Punk it. Punk <laughs> minstrels. <laughs> Bards of punk rock. Yes. 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 <laughs> they will tell of the epic adventures. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling there's going to be plenty of epic adventures. Off. Who wants to start us off, boys? I just got a uh, I got a new uh, trade paperback uh, from Amazon today that I ordered the other day. Right. Yeah, and and Matt, this actually might be up your alley. It's uh, it's from art from writer Kurt Busaic and our uh, artist Carlos Pacheco. It's called Aerosmith. It's not spelled like the band. It's spelled like uh, Arrow A R R O W Smith. And it takes. It's kind of like. Uh, 1918 or no 1917 meets uh lord of the rings nice like like yeah, that's pretty cool it's like dragons and D D shit combined with world war one Ooh, awesome oh that's, yeah that scratches all the itches doesn't it yes it does it it's that, that's oh my, it's that scratches something up my up my pants <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel funny <laughs> make make me happy in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. So wait a minute, we were supposed to wear pants. <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing I'm wearing legit shorts. Does that count? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck. Did you get illegit the memo? shorts? <laughs> I'm not wearing my legit short shirt. God damn it! I hate saying that in person because. This is kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Say it five times fast. I bet you can't. It's, it's just your legit shirt. Mm -hmm. Say it. Says Say legit it one shorts. more time. It I says legit you. shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so happy 420. Had... Happy 420, gentlemen. Yeah. Happy. I got some. I got, I got like a half hour freezer. left. Yep. About thirty-five minutes left. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. Better. I've been gone east, east, like east coast. Eight a.m. There. I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh eight fuck off, you fucking mountain timers. <laughs> <laughs> we still got plenty of time, Mister McKeever. Hey, mountain time listen, is the best time. That's right. Ain't no time like mountain time, baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> but as a night shifter, I always say it's not tomorrow till I've slept. <clears throat> no, that's a fact. I'll buy that so, for a dollar. So if I'm up till four in the morning, like I probably will be because I'm off again tomorrow. I'm yeah. It's still 420 for me. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and Matt's and where it's legal. So here he goes. <laughs> kind of 365, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. Canada, man. 423 and then 424 and then 829 and then 132. We're doing fractions tonight? What the fuck? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to be talking. We're supposed to be showing our shit. Like what? The <laughs> um, nobody said. Nobody said anything about math oh, class. Oh yeah, what that's the right. Hell? The show. The show. I didn't do oh. any thinking today at all, Craig. You. <laughs> You know what I did today? I watched all five episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. My man. Jesus Christ. That's a good show. If you haven't watched it, I can watch that show. Matt knew what I Matt seemed to know what I was talking about when I said the end of episode four. Yeah, no, I did. Um, that was pretty epic, and it's exactly what if you didn't expect if you didn't really expect that coming then i don't suppose you're paying attention because you could just see that guy getting wound up through yeah. each of the episodes and the way that the, I, there's just something about an anti-hero in my opinion mm-hmm. and in his case he's like on the precipice of villain i'd say by about this point Yes, but yeah. uh, that Andrew, that interests me because I'm totally not into like the hero persona unless you're Batman. Like, I don't know. I'm totally yeah, not a hero. vigilantism is cool in comics. Like that's why Batman works. That's why Punisher yeah. works. Yeah, that's exactly. Why, uh, why Jesse Custer, the preacher, works? Yeah. You know, they're they're not bad, but they're not good. But they're yeah, ultimately kind of in the middle, fighting for good. And they, they live life in is, a gray you know, area. Gotta stay in yeah. the middle. You can't be bad or good. You just kind of. It just takes some time. It's just if you can look at a hero, Joe. Copyright, copyright, Joe. Uh, <laughs> I think you could get away with like a few seconds. Yeah, before fif- they, fifteen before seconds. They I think. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're good. Unless it's or Disney. Disney. This is dead. They'll shut us down. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. No, that's any uh, like, <laughs> major. I mean, uh, uh studio. I mean, Disney, Disney. <laughs> exactly. Ryan's yeah, we're not Voldemort. <laughs> but he yeah, who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're not. We're not. So like, showing clips from the show, so we won't. No, we're. we're but we are showing geeky shit, and I figure I'll start. My man. I'm going to start off my love record collection little show and tell thing here. Hell yes. You guys are going to love this. <laughs> so, I don't know if you got, if this is going to show up good on the camera, but can you read that? Star Wars oh. theme cantina. What? Whoa. Yep. That's a 45 gentleman. <laughs> I love, and I also have the Empire Strikes Back medley on 45, and, and the, on the B side is the Force theme. So, yeah, that was a couple prize possessions. And then I got some Hall and Oats. Hall and Oats. By the eyes. <laughs> little, <you>? little Richard. <laughs> little Dude. Richard. I, I find some treasures, bro. Yeah. Little oh, Richard's man. punk as fuck, man. All Simon. Nice. Oh, my Sharona. And this one is a treasure for me. <laughs> Eat it, Weird Al. Oh, yep. Dude. Yeah. That is a treasure. And this one's just irony in a disc. It's fucking... Girl, you know it's true by Melly Vanelli. <laughs> girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl, you know it. I, I'm tempted to scratch it so it skips at the appropriate time. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about that is I was just watching Drunk History with Questlove, and he was talking about the history of hip hop. And I saw that it, one. It was so funny. <laughs> Not the best drunk history, but the history part of that one was really interesting. Yeah, man. It was the best part of my 45 collection. I can rickroll anybody. (laughs) Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. (laughs) I got the ballroom blitz. Did you ever hear Um, the Offsprings cover of that song, James? No. I've heard a bunch of different versions of it, though. But then it's you got these little days. things. They play at 45 RPM, just like a 45, but they're called flexi disc. They're what? flexi. 
I got these in a magazine. Yeah. Like a bunch of them. I got a bunch of like as like free samplers when I order seven inches and shit like that. Mm. And then I got some country shit like Willie Nelson, a Whiskey River. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Dang. Take a guess. <laughs> Can you figure it out? Matt has the twenty. It's Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one. And then this one, I always dance around like Vic Vega in Reservoir Dogs. You got some Steelers wheel. Yep, I do. I was stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> it makes me want to cut off somebody's ear. <laughs> uh, Black Betty, you know, I got fucking paper Ram race. Jam. Old shit, you know what I mean? A bunch of old mm-hmm. country. Islands in the sh- what? Islands in the stream. Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton. <laughs> Classic. Nice, dude. Hey, man. Dolly Parton. Nine. I got nine to five. Nine to five. <laughs> I grew up with I... that shit. <laughs> okay, now we're getting nice. into the good stuff. You guys will really appreciate this. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Little Nazi Punk Spock uh, off, yes. seven inch. More majority B side. Two wonderful, wonderful songs <laughs> by the Dead Kennedys. That is them. awesome. I find some rare shit. Now, Joe, I know I've shown, I've sent you their Spotify, mm-hmm. but I don't know about the other two here, Matt and Craig, but. Giving Chase. This is one of their seven inches. Mm, oh, no, I don't old believe friend, I've heard. Old friends of mine from back in the day. What? Nice. They, yeah, they used to live in the Philly area, Craig. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. They're good. Good if you're into post hardcore. You can find their shit on Spotify, YouTube, yeah. iTunes, wherever. Ooh. Little Adam and the Ants. <clears throat> Adam and the Ants. I bought this strictly for the B side. Because <laughs> it's uh, Beat My Guest because it's on the SLC Punk soundtrack yep. and I love yep. that fucking song. Yep. So. And Little With Honor. This one looks like a comic book. Oh, that's awesome. But it's a split, seven inch. Ring Warm Mind Snare. That's pretty good shit right there. Yeah. I got and I got to plug my buddy Houston, you know, Houston Herman in New Jersey. This is his band, Houston and Dirty Rat for seven inch <laughs> songs from the bathroom stall. I got to represent nice. them. It's good <laughs> shit. That's fucking fantastic stuff. Also Spotify, iTunes, all that, all that good shit. Bandcamp. And this one is that square vinyl I put on my Facebook a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, yeah. It's fucking. It's Wait. not even. Vi- it's not even vinyl. It's plexiglass. Bad yeah, I remember. Time. I looked so weird actually spinning. Like that was just. Yeah, dude, it's trippy, trippy, trippy. And then I got <laughs> a couple of these ten-inch vinyls, a bunch of rare shit that I found for a dollar at the record store. So I just bought it. Sonic Ascension Records, Mentorsville, Pennsylvania. Shout out. <laughs> Lee Ash, my buddy. Get this shit out of my way. <laughs> Anybody questions? Anybody? Loving what I see, dude. Jeez, that's awesome. Yeah, that is insane. I'm just getting started. Somebody else can do something. I can take a break. You guys ever seen an oversized Star Wars comic? No. A Star Wars such a what? thing? Oh, Star Wars comic? That's a magazine, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, from nineteen seventy-eight. Oh shit! Uh, it, it's over o- oversized. Look at that. That's awesome. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, I got a bunch. Of, I got some. Oh, and I got some Alan Moore written Swamp Thing. Wow. Mm-hmm. But I was actually out here digging out all my uh, trade paper bags because, you know, 
we're checking out records, which is rad. And like we're talking about geeky cool shit. So like fucking bring it on. If I can get my ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped. Let's go, man. What the, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, where is Matt? No, he came I, did, I did not turn off my telephone at the same time, so oh. somebody phoned at the same time, so I had to decline. Uh, ah, gotcha. But, okay, so while Joe's oh. looking around for stuff. Yeah, our oh, four, yeah. 420 episode, we are going out with a bang. <laughs> Indeed, this is a little, extra special episode little, for everybody. Little static age, gentlemen, misfits of punk rock. Yep. I'm gonna keep going wow. with this. I got their "Die Die My Darling" 12 inch single. Oh, yeah. 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 Little Earth AD. Oh. Yeah, that was Ooh. the first shirt, the first Misfits shirt I ever got. Because nice. uh, I was 14 years old and. I just happened to see him. They were like, I thought it was like Cannibal Corpse, and <laughs> <laughs> they changed my goddamn life. I, 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 I was never big into like death metal or anything like that, but like horror themed stuff, I, absolutely, obviously. And like, I think absolutely. the is a real coming of age band for any like horror, punk, metal. They they just fit in everywhere. They scratch a lot of itches. Yes. You know, it's funny. I didn't get into the Misfits until Metallica. Really? Yeah, when they covered their Die, 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 My Darling. Yeah. version. Yeah. No, it wasn't even Die, Die, My Darling. It was Last oh, it was, Dress, uh, Last Last Dress Green Hell. Yes. Yep. And it was, yeah, on the, you... uh, it, was, it was originally on the Garage Days EP. Mm. Yes. And then they put, then I got. Yeah, Garage and then they did the re release. I did Garage. I got. Gra- gra- uh, <laughs> I got. I got the cassette. Of uh, Garage Incorporated and Last Caress just blew my mind. And then my buddy burned me a copy of Live Shit Binge and Purge, mm. and they played a bunch of covers on that. And I was just like, okay, that's new stuff. I gotta find the original versions. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, and then mm. but and I got Legacy of Brutality. You no, know, shit. a little more missed, but I this isn't it's Static Age, you know. Minus and plus. Yeah. I got their collection, you know, good shit. It was also the first time I ever heard them was when I just ended up like bought a shirt. I will admit it now, not even knowing the band. It's like it looked that cool. And then like not even a day later, I was like a full fledged fan. See that's, that's cool, man. Happened. That's how quick yeah, they dude. like changed my life. That's how it yep. happened for me with uh, Green Day. I heard a uh, basket case on the radio, and yep. Well, Green Day luckily... was my. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, but luckily I was primed a little bit beforehand because before I heard Basket Case, I've told this story a few times, like in PRF. Um, my, my first exposure to any music that is like you know in the punk genre was the Runaways their cover of wild thing from yeah. I was because i was watching the major league movie yeah. it was when yeah. rick wild thing vaughn was in the bar and he put that put it on and that chick walked up to him and said wild thing you make my heart sing <laughs> and but and, and i and i thought that i was like wow she's pretty but my mind was focused on like who is singing right now what is this song what is even happening i feel like i woke up and took crazy pills this is crazy <laughs> this is awesome and then that primed me for basket case. Yeah, that's so, funny so you should say that, Joe. Because a couple records down, I got one more Misfits record, Project Nineteen Fifty. Project Nineteen Fifty. Project. Yeah, 19. the re- This is the re-release. It has the uh, bonus tracks and shit on it. It's really good. Okay. And then new artwork. Okay, so you said Dookie. Yes. Yeah, ah! that is awesome. <laughs> The picture oh, is it's that fucking is awesome. amazing. The inlay image is the back. Yeah. <laughs> so that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't play music. It's just a pic. Is that what they call it? Just no. It disc? plays. It's it's the record. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's just a picture disc. Yeah. It's just they put the picture on it and then carved it out. 
with the songs. Oh, okay, okay. I got a bunch <laughs> of shit like that. I love That's that kind awesome. of stuff. That's awesome. He just this blew my mind, really dude. Fucking cool. This one's really fucking cool. It's the casualties on the mm-hmm. front line. Great uh, album. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. It's, mm. it's sharp. It's fun to watch. I get you high. Show me that it. one. That thing's awesome. awesome. I've showed this to <laughs> fucking everybody. I'm proud of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> As you should be, dude. That thing's awesome. And I actually forgot something. I said I was going to start with it, but I lied. I got to go over here and grab it. Two seconds. We're all punk rock. We are all punk. Yes. And we're proud of it. Some might think this is a lunchbox. But it is not. It is... The Rancid singles collection, but it's what? every album up until Let the Dominoes Fall on 45. Like up to six songs, you know, because they have short songs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I had to number them all so I didn't get them out of order because mm. I'm OCD as shit. <laughs> but I found this at Pirate Express Records. It's still available there if any of y'all want that. That's awesome. It's like 160 bucks. I think I paid for it. Yeah. So. That's not bad at all. Wow. No. Nah, not as bad as the fucking Bad Religion sound fucking box set. Only you one know... I could find was $700. <laughs> oh, shit. Kiss my ass. I'll just buy them one at a time. <laughs> uh, the, the way I understand it is uh, Into the Unknown is like th- you can only get that album nowadays in that box set. It's not worth it. Uh, th- it's a weird album. It is. It's good, but it's not worth it. It's hey, not James. worth $700. James, <laughs> you, ever listen to, you ever listen to Into the Unknown? You ever listen to Into the Unknown? Oh, weed? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, nope. I, I listen to everything on weed. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck hey, kind of question is that? I can't <laughs> that at all. More punk. I love uh, this album. The the Ramones. It's alive. They were like my live intro live. in the punk rock. I just never really realized it. Like Green Day, where I really started to realize, like, hey. This music is so fun, but like the Ramones were always kind of in my life. And of course, yeah, the Ramones, like for me, I heard MXPX do the KKK took my baby away, and I was just mm. like, I, okay, that's a good song. And they were, my sister was like, no, oh, that's the Ramones, and played me the original version. I was like, what's more of their stuff? And then I, <laughs> then Bullets Creek Bop, you know, she played that for me, and I was like, I know that song. My friend's band plays it. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. Because I was like 13, you know, seventh grade ish. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, there are others. They all sound the same, but they're great. <laughs> I, yep. Like they're all different. And I that, I love it. Yeah, because it's. I love it. The kid, they, they can make every song 30 seconds and it would still be the same to me because it's just happy music. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. But a yeah, lot of, they have some dark lyrics, but they, it's happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got every Nirvana album. At least that's important to me. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so. <clears throat> oh, okay. Getting down to nitty gritty. I got to represent our boys. Uh, yes. You know. It can't it can't shout out Mike Ladon. Yep. yep. Mike Ladon. Chaser. Jesse. Jesse stop fucking killing it. Up. Really proud of what you guys are doing. Keep doing it. Mike, Stay Jesse, if you see this, you guys beautiful. rock. Yeah. Follow us, please. Please. <laughs> like and subscribe. Fun. We're new. <laughs> We're infant here. <laughs> We're oh freshly God. out of the womb. 
We are taking baby steps right now. <laughs> we really are. Yeah, yeah. This 420. So the best starter, guys. <laughs> well, you know, we're doing this our way. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. I don't want to follow why. some formulaic crap that some YouTuber does. Yeah, this that's is our this is rock. our show. Yeah. We make the rules. And guess yeah, what? There really time. are no rules. Yeah. This is down here, it's our time. Yeah. 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 Right. Go- Goonies never say die. Goonies never <laughs> say then... die. Bring it all the way back around. Oh, but by the way, PRF Theater every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and then my boss hands this to me one day. Let them know. That is awesome. The story Whoa. of Brigade. Youth Brigade and BYO Records. Yeah. Sweet. And it's a double vinyl and it's a coffee table book. Telling oh, story. cool. Yeah. Look at that. That's rad. But it's got two records and it's also got a CD in there. There used to be a DVD, but I don't know what happened to it. Ah, damn. Each, each cover has a record. Mm-hmm. It's good shit, too. Yeah, that's Coach awesome. Covers. Bunch covered, good stuff. Dig it. All right. Somebody else go. Uh, hold on, hold on. I got stuff. All right. That's stuff. <laughs> go, Craig, go. Go, Craig, go. That's just some of some of my collection that I'm proud of. We top of the line security guards, Craig. Of the Talking world, Craig. Of <laughs> the world, Craig. It's just funny that we found this t- in a box. The essential yeah. encyclopedia. Ooh, thick I'm, not worthy. Is... I'm not worthy. <laughs> it is like an entire dictionary. Anyone you can ever think of who's been added into the series is in this book. An entire profile. That's brilliant. You're going to love some one. Batman shit that I got, Craig. I'm Samuel Check this out. Batman versus Predator. What? That escalated quickly. <laughs> Joe, can't number talk one, about. number one in a three-issue arc, and this is written by. Uh, oh, who was who wrote this? I think uh, I think Dan Slott wrote this, or or no, not Dan Slott. Hang on a second. It's really good, but Andy Kubert did the artwork, and he's the son of uh, Joe Kubert, legendary comic book artist, the guy that created Sergeant Rock. Wow. And he has a school uh, for art school in New Jersey. Like over in. Uh, uh, where, hold on a second. Uh, Dave Gibbons wrote this. Dave Gibbons is a co creator of Watchmen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, he is. And, and Andy Kubert did the pencils, and Adam Kubert, his brother, did the inks and the letters. And Denny O'Neill is editor on this. Mind you, gentlemen, this is back when it still said Batman was created by Bob Kane. But we know now that Batman was created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Mm-hmm. That he was. Give the man his fucking due. <laughs> if, super, if Superman can be created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, then Batman can be yep. created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Enough said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I just, I'm just ranting. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting my book. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Got another prize to just. <laughs> yes. It is deep in the massive <laughs> fairy. But Batman versus Predator. That's some. Batman that's versus. Got to be some good. That's got to be some good shit. Dude, it's such a good story, and they've done like three or four Batman Predator crossovers. The. the, the this is the only one that matters. This is the only one you need right. to read. Yeah. That's cool. But sadly, they will never be able to cross over again because Marvel now has the pr- license for Predator because, you know, Disney bought Fox. Yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll only, buy yeah. everything. We are not Disney fans around here. Give it time. They'll own the Warner Brothers characters. I guarantee We're not Disney fans, but world. I guarantee you we all have Disney+. Plus. Yes. Talking the Winter Soldier every Friday on Disney Plus. <laughs> Are there more episodes of that coming? Yeah, we only got one more this Friday, and then probably, an, so um, gonna, yeah, probably gonna, another probably another one. Series. 
How many was there in uh, WandaVision? Because it'll probably be about the same. There was nine. Well, actually, technically ten, but number ten was just a behind-the-scenes episode. How they made it and shit. Mm I haven't watched that one yet. It's It's worth it. Oh, my gosh. It's good. It's weird. So much time. I thought about watching that, too, but I had shit to do. (laughs) <laughs> not as much shit as I originally had to do. I can I put I was able to put some of it off till tomorrow, but yeah. I'd at least go to the store and get some drinks. <laughs> In there. I I'm just I don't know, never not even like ever had anything against them, but I'm just not in the Marvel. I don't know. Like not that I wouldn't give it a chance. It's never really followed it i don't know i don't uh, i don't i don't see the crazy girl. involved like i it's cool but i don't i can't keep up with how far they're taking it you know what i mean so yeah yeah no you're you're good dude that's all good yeah i am totally people have opinion totally uh-huh. willing to learn yep. <clears throat> check this out matt here it is that one that i just got today Oh, nice. Arrows, uh, yep, see? World War One. He's got a little dragon, dude, that accompanies him around. Yeah. <laughs> it's rad. It's so cool. <laughs> Such a good story, man. Uh, they never got uh, around to writing a sequel to it, which bums me out. Yeah. Talking comics. I got one. I got this bad boy. Ooh. That's pretty sick. What? Yep. Don't the artwork. Oh, nice. Oh, dude. Yeah. This book is insane. I've had this book for like almost 20 years now. And that's it's probably... Like 20 years? Yeah. That's probably out of everything I have, that's probably like number one prize possession that I have because I have a Dawn of the Dead comic. <laughs> I know lots yeah, of other people do, but I do. So. Yep. Yeah. And you love you love horror shit anyway. Absolutely. So that's my deal. Yep. Tunes, horror, toys. That's awesome. Well, now that's not just any horror, right? Like that's OG horror. <laughs> Talk to this guy. That's Slash. That's Slash Turtle. What? Oh, wow. I never had him. Yep. Yeah. He's an original he in the police cartoon? Dude. Yeah. Yeah, he was a side villain. But he okay. was a pretty he was a pretty popular one. He ended up being a pretty popular one. I can't say like side. Yeah, I, they were like uh, He-Man with their villains, right? Like they were producing villain action figures yeah. faster than they could animate them. Yeah, and that's what it came down to. It wasn't even like keeping up with the cartoon; it was keeping up with the toys at that point. It was like, who can we release? Like, we need to come up with new figures. Like, we need yeah. to come up with new characters so that we can keep and pushing. And it was yeah. the same with Power Rangers. Yeah. Keep the machine rolling. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's the feared ham sandwich man. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. On Dude, to the next. One. Yeah, man. Those later seasons got so fucking bad. Like, <laughs> even well, the first season was the worst with the fucking monsters because there was the one that ate everybody. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and then there was the pig. He was yeah. first season. Yep. Yeah. And uh, but Dude, I love the Power Rangers. It's so fucking cheesy. I don't give a fuck. And yeah. the Green Ranger, Power Rangers. Jason David Frank, always going to be one of my favorite Power Ranger. I don't care. I have you ever... Facebook. Really? I do. Mm-hmm. And okay. he's interactive, too. Like, he'll talk to you. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say, um, have you ever read Tommy... Uh, Tommy Oliver's uh, like a uh, f- uh, fan wiki article, like uh, you know he's a doctor too. Yeah, like the character oh, yeah. Of Tommy Oliver. Yeah. yeah, in the late in the later seasons, he actually comes back as the Black Dino Ranger. Really? Yeah. Like the later I got, series. I watched the original Power Ranger uh, show. I, I didn't follow any anything subsequent because it just it I, got a little. It, I quit following him after uh, the first half of the Turbo Ranger season because mm-hmm. Tommy was gone, mm. and Tommy's my shit. Tommy yeah. Oliver was my Power Ranger, and I was, I was like, okay, they got rid of Kimberly Hart. That was one thing. Oh. Now they're getting rid of Tommy. No, 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 no. I'm done. No more Power Rangers for James. 
<laughs> yeah, Amy they, they Jo really... Johnson is awesome. She's yeah. still hot. <laughs> yes, she is. Yeah. She's still, she's still hot. No, it was the same for me because I was like primed for Power Rangers. I was like nine years old when they released Power Rangers. I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was in kindergarten. I, I remember taking my kindergarten nap time was Power Rangers was on TV. And we were getting ready to take our naps. Yep. After Power Rangers, we'd lay down, take a little snooze. Yep. Right. I just yep. started my geekiness, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've always been a geek mode. Like even as a kid, like if I was obsessed about something, I was obsessed. With it. And it was always cartoons, and it was always horror movies and gargoyles. Gargoyles, gargoyles Only because real... gargoyles be- came on before Power Rangers. Man, that wow. show was way ahead of its time. That show kicked Fuck ass. Yeah. Fuck yeah! That show. So, that show. It, it ahead, was. Jerry. It was for older kids and like nobody had that understanding though like it it could have gone further it really could have yeah. okay. it, it would have marketed yeah. it right but at that time you couldn't really market cartoons to kids like that age like you can now you know what i mean like us at that age we still probably would have bought right into it at the time that came out the generation it just didn't fit yeah it's really weird that our generation holds on to nostalgia so much. It, you're looking at who holds on to things, who talks about things the most, who remembers things the most. It always comes down to us because I don't know why, but it's it's a good question. We're it's kind of like we're we're archiving this stuff as we should. Yeah, yeah. I think we also had the most technology. You know, we had the most memories with TV and everything, so the best guys to do it that's why we're here so i missed out i had to walk out of the room for a minute what did i miss no no i was just talking about like selling generations you know like if Mm. if people older just a little bit older than us like when we were kids if it would have been able to market cartoons teenagers gargoyles would have been that one cartoon yeah between Mm -hmm. gargoyles and i I think Batman, the anime, animated series, could have gone there. Easily. Oh yeah, for sure. Easily, they oh. could have done great things with that. Show. Yeah, that show was amazing. It was amazing. I mm-hmm. love. I, that, I think that's one yeah. of my. Those were my favorite action easy. figures. Were the Batman animated series because? Uh, oh yeah. Like yeah, I love the uh, ones that you could take and turn them from Bruce Wayne into Batman. Like you yeah. dress yeah. down and shit. Like, I just love those figures. I had a bunch of them. I even had one for the Michael Keaton Batman. Mm. And, but yeah, Batman was my shit for sure, yeah. as far as like comic heroes. But like, I <laughs> later I got into like the Marvel movies and stuff like that. And that got me into like Hulk and Thor and yeah. Iron Man. Well, my, my stepson loves Iron Man. And at one point I said he had more Iron Man shit than Tony Stark. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That's awesome. He he once flipped out when we went to Walmart because I couldn't afford to get him an Iron Man helmet or something something with Iron Man. I can't can't remember if it was a helmet or like a big like figure, but it was like thirty bucks, and at the time, and I didn't get paid for like two more days. And I was like, "Bud, we're just here for essentials." Yeah, and we had to walk by the toy department to. You know, get to where we were going. So he yeah. saw that Iron Man thing and flipped out. It's like I can't get it for I can get it for you Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, Be patient. And I had to pick him up because he was screaming <laughs> and crying. Oh he like, Lord. He was like five or six when that happened. Yeah, his whole heart was broken. Yeah, his whole heart was broken. Crocodile Aww. tears. Just... Oh. <laughs> but he did end up I did end up getting it for him because I told him I would. There you go. I was like, I get paid Friday. I'll get it for you Friday. Just yeah. chill, kid. Our first guest. No, but here. chill. Oh, he's here, right. Mr. Vader. Our first guest. Hey. All right. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Vader? Oh, man. 420 episode, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so. 
I took a picture of my socks earlier. Rocco's Modern Life. Mm-hmm. We were talking about how yeah. <clears throat> some of the some of those shows how they shouldn't have made the air, but they did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, want, oh, who wants baby. to give some oh, examples? Baby. Oh baby. Matt, you look like you're, you're deep in thought over there. <laughs> well <clears throat> I'd totally forgotten about that cartoon until you posted that. <laughs> and that was an aberrant cartoon. It was hilarious. Yep. I don't remember it's... much about it now. It seems like it was so long ago, but that was such a great cartoon. Uh, it's yeah. one of my favorites. It... Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Just because of that. Just because of like the audacity they did because I was old enough to understand what they were doing and it they're doing this. Hmm. Yeah, I I remember I watched it as a kid, like religiously, because it was on every morning before I went to school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I would be waiting for the bus and just watching Rocco's Modern Life every morning. Either that or Say by the Bell, but it was usually yeah. Rocco's Modern Life. Yep. Yeah. And so I would, fucking as I got older, like around 10, 11, 12, I was like, wow, they're doing some questionable shit on this show. <laughs> this is yeah. like some Beavis and Butthead stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think and that's then, what it comes down to. I think you just said the magic words there. Yeah. Good. I mean, Beavis, Beavis and Butthead and Ren and Stimpy, I think we were just primed for it. Right. But I was like really young when Rocco started. Yeah, so I kind of just matured as I watched it, I guess, and I just laughed yeah. at it all because it was fucking funny. Well, and <laughs> my kid Red and Stippy was so far ahead of its time; it it was unreal. Yeah, and so, because yeah. so much time passed after it opened every single door, when it came back, there was no way it was ever going to touch the original in in a million years. Yeah, You're talking it, about the one that they tried to do on Spike TV? Yeah. yeah. The only way they could yeah. top you is by going over the top. And, like, when you see people talk about the show, they're talking about the when they're, like, getting down to the nitty-gritty. I I remember it being awkward and, like, strange. But I don't remember being it that directly strange until it was, like, just took it over the top with all the sexual innuendos and everything they they really made it happen but they were supposed to like it's well um like like that meme that you posted uh, oh baby oh baby oh baby <laughs> like we're we're all little kids watching this cartoon and he's he's a phone sex operator yeah but how in the fuck <laughs> did, did nickelodeon's like here, here's my impression of the Nickelodeon executive in charge of, you know, putting episodes on Rocco's Modern Life. Mm. Eric! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a wall, it's episode. A wall, it's a wallaby talking in, talking dirty. <laughs> Eric! <laughs> no, you make a good point because I I, I bring the wacky del- deli episode to the table. That, that one... <laughs> Yeah. Well, the, the they restaurant I ever worked at was called the Choky Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Choky Chicken. I'm going to send you to heck. <laughs> to heck, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch and Cow then, and Chicken? Yes. No. I never watched G- that. Oh, my God. The, 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 the devil. It, it, oh, God. But oh my god going, going back to Rocco's modern life quick sorry when no it's all good they go to the, i can't remember where they went it's like a campground or some shit and there's escalators it's like a campground of the future yeah, or yeah. and they're walking through and then have, there's a fucking bush what time it is and <laughs> there's a bush <laughs> and Rocco thinks it's berries that he's grabbing but it's a it berries all right but it's a bear's berries yeah. <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> Yep, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, holy shit! He just grabbed a bear's balls <laughs> <laughs> on television. Television, no less. For for children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, we'll go with it. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
this people are gonna love this, I guess, and we do. We, I love Rocco's Modern Life. Absolutely. Um, but like I said, I think we were just raised different, though. We we were kind of unsheltered to that kind of. You know what I mean? Especially Ooh, with me. Yeah. I started return watching Return of the Living Dead at like five years old, so I yeah, was I, in it. I was exposed to it, and it never. I don't know. I turned out okay. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> the, not normal, the, but okay. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My mom and I, I, my dad had this big bag of VHS tapes for whatever reason. And yeah. I was p- going through, I found Armed and Dangerous, by the way, John Candy. Yeah. And I ended up, I love that movie. I ended up falling <laughs> love it. But I found this because I had seen, um, uh, I, I think I'd seen a Freddy Krueger movie and that wasn't really scary for me, mm. you know, because Freddy Krueger to me was just a little bit more cartoony and, you know, both over kind of over the top. Um, but Leatherface, Leatherface was a whole other ball game. That movie scared when, 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 when he attacked that kid in the fucking wheelchair. <laughs> Yeah, I I, that... I tapped out. I was a little. I, I <laughs> ran to my fucking room like, no. Yeah, that I, Toby Hooper really, really went off the rails yeah. with that, especially for like 1977. Like it, that's like George Romero doing Night of the Living Dead. You know, like every. Yes. Yeah, that movie was way ahead of its time. Night of the Living Dead. I have the uh, 40th anniversary DVD. Yeah. When they re-released it back in yeah. black and white, I think it was the thirtieth. Was in color, uh, or was it the twentieth? Yes, twentieth. Yeah, it would have been the twentieth because the color was made in nineteen ninety, so it would have been the twentieth around there. Okay, so, they're coming after you. You're the you, expert Bob. on horror. So. They're going to get you, yeah. Barbara. They're coming <laughs> after you, Barbara. <laughs> no. Uh, What'd yeah, you think like of the Ryan original? Stimpy. What'd you think Go of the original? Pe- uh, what'd you think of the original Pet Cemetery, Craig? I love the original movie. Pet Cemetery. That scared I, the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not I gonna lie. Up. That movie. It that movie. My head, that dude. movie can mess you up mentally, especially with Stephen Gabe. King. Dude. Mm. Oh, dude, that's what killed me. Is little. Ga- I I wasn't prepared for something like that. Yeah, and I was movies. really young at the time when I first saw it. And I was, what the what just happened and i actually know the truck driver who um i'm friends with him on facebook but he you he mentioned even that, said yeah. the moment itself was life-changing like just being there and like even knowing it's fake like they really played the scene out well even with filming just the energy there i guess it was it'll always be known as a moving moment but a horror moment, but like a really moving one where, that nobody really wants to. Everybody kind of looks the way, I think. Mm-hmm. And you just see Lewis Creed descend into madness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It, Stephen King got really deep. And like, you can't really get deep into a Stephen King movie because there's no time. Even with Rose Red, he took it like what, three hours, I believe. And couldn't even touch the surface of what he was trying to do. It's mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I think it ended that man's mind in movie form, unless you're like willing to put out an entire series. Just based Agreed. on one movie. <laughs> yeah. Talking about movies that fucked you up as a kid, Joe. Um people under the stairs. <gasps> yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, great great movie. movie. I love it. Uh-huh. One of my favorite movies. Okay, I can watch it back now, but I still, I still have trouble with the dark basement. Mm. Like, like, even I didn't go in my mom's basement for like a month. I was ten and big. I was a big kid. Mm. I was terrified it, to go in that fucking basement. It, and I knew there was nothing down there except fucking cans of peaches. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I, I they were the weirded out by our beast because it's all just concrete and it's weird and like especially movies basements and movies will fuck you up yeah. I think that's what yeah. did it for me 
And like, I'm always running up the stairs, trying to, <laughs> there's, there's something about basements and movies that they just do it right. Yeah. There's a movie that came out in the mid 2000s. Craig, you might know what I'm talking about. It's called The Girl Next Door. It's a horror movie. Yep. Yeah. It's ba- I think it's based on true events. I believe so. I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. that, and uh, the, I, uh, I, I don't even like thinking about it because just what they did to that poor girl. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, <laughs> I, got, I got, I got kiddos, and like, uh, yep. no, uh, I'll Does talk about. Did watch Hereditary? Not yet. No, I heard that's. Oh, I, I refuse. I, I would I would not recommend it to you. But I refuse. You got I, my little girls, man. That's gonna be. Rough. Yeah, I'm not into kids dying. Like I can yeah. watch people getting sawed in half. I would not. I would not. I had to pause and take pick up the next day. Yeah. Okay. It was it was rough. Do we know it's a it's a that's good all it's I've a heard good movie. That's why I don't it's a see. good movie. But I did finish it. But <laughs> ooh, I don't. It, I, <laughs> That's a rough one. It's yeah. A rough one. Sounds yeah. like it, man. Fuck. Like, I'm, usually I can handle a death scene in a movie, and it, like, and if it involves a child in a movie, like, yeah, it's going to get me, but depending on, like, how it happens, like, if it, if they yeah. show it or not, and how it happens. Yeah, yeah like, if, if they showed it, screen, and it was bad. Yeah. I was like, nope. I, I was in too much shock. I had to watch something funny. You know? <laughs> I Grandma's boy it for, is. Grandma's I made it. Nope, nope, nope. I went to the machine. The machine. Yes. Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. <laughs> Bert Crusher. We Bert love is the man. Bert, you ever see this? You fucking rule, dude. I'll fucking tweet it to him. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just don't the watch machine. the 420 episode. <laughs> 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 I think we're doing pretty good for our first episode. We're all right. Yeah, man, yeah. we're having fun. 420. <laughs> Finding our groove. Matt, awesome. Matt, what do you want to talk about, bud? Yeah, Be you've quiet. been awfully quiet, Mad Mage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, like I said, I, I made a bad decision earlier, and it's it's catching up with me. So I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> just trying to keep up. <laughs> bad decision you say <laughs> yeah, he's celebrating 420 uh, you bet <laughs> you know i i've it the can't on my end it cut to you a couple times matt and it looked like you were nodding off <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, we got a sleepy canadian folks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Matt, what's on your mind, brother? Not, uh, not, not much. Anything. I just. Uh, I think his mind is clear. But Where yeah, is my pretty much. <laughs> I managed to keep up today with school and and be pleased with it. I got a mark back already. Did and you write a couple of essays? Is that right? Five. Five of them. Damn. Mm-hmm. Son. Yeah. What? What and about? Then, uh, one was about. The relationship between ancient Rome and the early Christian church. Mm-hmm. Then there was one on, uh, there's a song in the musical Hamilton called the, A Farmer Refuted about the American Revolution. I had to write a paper on that. Oh, I still got to finish that. God damn it. And then the, uh, the Canadian murder mystery. Hmm. There was a diplomat, a Canadian diplomat during the Suez crisis that committed suicide from the Swedish embassy, right at the right at the height of everything going on. That was an intense paper. It was actually quite interesting because I didn't know any of that had happened. Hmm. Now the the Suez crisis. Uh... Can you give me like cliff notes on that real quick? Like, what was that all about? Well, I should I feel like I should know this, man. 
Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how they teach it in the United or in the U.S. because I didn't learn about it in high school in Canada. So, but uh, the Egyptian government decided to nationalize the Suez Canal. It was kind of oh, like oh yeah 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 okay okay yep. What that then, super tanker got stuck in a few weeks ago? Yeah, mm-hmm. and okay. uh, the big problem was the British, the French, and the Israel government <laughs> invaded Egypt without talking to the U.S. and Kaboom. Yeah. And it, but yeah. that was when Canada was hitting above its weight class internationally. And they managed to calm everybody down. Our prime minister um, developed the UN peacekeeping force, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Like the dude is solid. Yeah. Big nerd, too, by the way, wore a bow tie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> was that Mr. I love was that Mr. Trudeau? No, that's Mr. Pearson. Oh, Mr. Pearson. Okay. He was also the PM when they decided on our flag too. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. If, I don't know if you could tell, audience, I, I really dig on Canada. <laughs> <laughs> big big oh, fan. Big Canada. fan. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I don't even have one. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that about America too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into vex- I'm into I'm in, I'm a little into vexillology. I got uh, an American flag, a British flag, Australian flag, Irish flag, and Canadian flag on my walls. No, yeah. flags are cool. I don't have any flags? I'm a fan <laughs> of flags. You're a flag smasher. <laughs> one wor- one world, one people. Yep. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> no, <laughs> I ain't spoiling anything. Hmm. Yeah. Ah. Back to what we were talking about with the cartoons and shit, and how some of them made air and they should probably shouldn't have. Yes. Yeah. Rest wrestling does the same thing. Yep. Oh. Craig, I know you'll remember this. I'm gonna bring it up because I can't. You know, wrestling nerd. That's what I do. <laughs> there is an angle involving Triple H, Kane. And a young lady named Katie Vick. Mm-hmm. You remember that storyline? I believe so. I might have. I got out of wrestling for a while, but okay, I'll tell the story then. You can find clips tell on the story. YouTube. There. Oh my God! It's it. No, should not. Maybe kicking. Okay, so Triple H was the world <laughs> champion, right? Hmm. And him and Kane were feuding. Kane wants the world title, all that shit. And so one night, Kane, Triple H comes out and mentions Katie Vick. And Kane's just staring at him like, why would you bring her up? No, don't do that. The next week, Triple H says, I have video, and I'm going to show it later tonight. And it shows video of Triple H in a Kane mask walking into a funeral home, mm-hmm. climbing into the casket with the corpse, Mm. Of Katie Vick. Oh, and, do, and, and doing the deed, saying that Kane participated in necrophilia. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> this shit oh. made air. Live <laughs> television. Yep. But they were they were even worse back in the day. I mean, look at how much stuff was getting removed. Mm-hmm. I mean Good it, Lord. It, Hey, uh, that's wow. just the tip of the iceberg, man. But like, yeah, so much questionable shit. Yep. Like Kid Rock performed on Raw one night. Mm-hmm. A couple of dudes threw Joe C in a garbage can, put the lid on it, and threw it up against oh, the wall. Don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> you yeah, know, some of the shit though. Joe C, may he rest in peace. Yes. So, <laughs> that little crazy dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going well. <laughs> Remember I was talking exactly about what I hope for. Remember I was talking about uh, 
Secret, uh, Secret Wars last night, the comic, you know, I got the Spider-Man one uh, where he gets his alien costume. Well, I also have number one. Ooh, shit. With all the yeah. heroes on the cover. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I also have this. By the way, don't get excited <laughs> about this. It's it's not an actual old school comic. It's a reprint uh, DC yeah. showcase. Yeah. yeah I cool. wish... Fuck, I wish this was the the real deal. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, yes. Also picked up... Um, I got this. This is from uh, writer and artist Eric Powell. It's the, the, the Goon. Oh, nice. <sighs> yeah. I, I, I really need to read <clears throat> these, man. Like, there was a comic store in the mall here in... Uh, Nampa, not far from where I live. It was it was short lived. It was very short lived. You want you want you want comics here in in, uh, in the valley? You go to Captain Comics in Boise off of Vista. That's Captain Comics on Vista Avenue, Boise, Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> For our Idaho viewers, <laughs> all two of them. Uh, all two of them. Yep. <laughs> Deadpool. Oh, One Deadpool. day it might be three of them. Yes. <laughs> you know what? If we if we only ever perform to three people for the duration of our podcast, I would be happy and content because I had an audience. Ah, <laughs> we already got what? We got a hundred. But, but it's are, also. But I'm also. And it's not about that though. As well, it's like hanging with you guys, my friends, and. Just you know, talking about shit that speaking geek, love. yeah, geek. love this man. Like you sharing your record collection, James is fucking rad, man. And Craig, your Batman stuff and the Slash <laughs> Turtle, dude. I know you. I know you're holding out. You got more cool shit, dude. All I gotta do is turn the computer around. I have tons. Yeah, <laughs> I have tons. Mm. I will always have something cool to show, probably. <laughs> Matthew, how are you? Doing all right, Joe. Doing all right, all right. okay. Nice. <laughs> the, the mad mage is deep in meditation. Yeah, subdued. Subdued mage. <laughs> the subdued mage. <laughs> <laughs> By golly. <laughs> Hat Riot approves. <laughs> I don't know what I think about that as a as a handle. Hat Riot. Yeah. You should put nah. it up for a vote, Joe. Well, yes, we will. Um, after, yes, we, we we shall put it up for a vote. I I I was I was talking to uh, someone. I I said, you know, I. I'm talking geek and stuff like that with my friends. Maybe it's just G.I. Joe, you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of plays on, Baller. you know? Uh, that was my favorite cartoon when I was a kid. Yo, Joe. Oh, G.I. Joe. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You know what? We don't even need to put up to a vote. Just, that's my <laughs> handle. That's my handle. G.I. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord! I didn't get to watch a ton of GI Joe, but we, had, my brother and I, had a ton of GI Joe action figures. That oh, was yeah. pretty ridiculous. I didn't have a whole lot of action figures when I was a kid. I had more Transformers and GoBots than I did uh, GI Joe. No, GoBot, GoBots are the Kmart of Transformers. <laughs> yes, they are, but they're also cool. They were, I thought. You know, but here when I look back on it, there, the the leader of the GoBots was Leader One. That was his name. <laughs> yeah. Now you compare that to Transformers, Optimus Prime. Yep. That's a fucking badass name. What? What's? Who are you? I, I'm the leader of the GoBots. Oh, what? What? What, what do they call you? Leader One. <laughs> oh. I'm in Delaware. 
<laughs> that's funny because it's essentially saying the same thing. That's just Latin. Because Optimus Prime is greatest one. Uh, okay. And the, like greatest, like in like one who leads, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Total knockoff. Yep. The Kmart Transformers. Well, yep. They're just Latin rules, so it makes everything sound super cool. Dude, I, I, I think it's awesome that you, you throw you you uh, are uh, like into Latin and stuff like that, Matt. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I could only imagine. I can barely learn no English, joke, man. Because it's it's technically a dead language, correct? Well, and, sorta. Sorta. Yeah. Well, it's not I mean, really it's... dead if we throw terms around like quid pro quo. Absolutely. And, and, you know, in habeas corpus. Oh. You know, and we stay well in medicine and in naming things. Everything's in a lot of our languages derivative of Latin and French mm-hmm. and German. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. A good majority of the English language came from German. Yes, it did. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with like the, the conquest <clears throat> and stuff like that? Like in the Viking uh, settlements they had, I think. Because the Vikings are Germanic people. Yeah, well, it had something to do with that, but like even the Celts had spoke like uh, an old, like old, old English language that was almost Germanic. So they kind of, they were similar languages, but they were different enough that they couldn't understand each other mm-hmm. until the conquering happened. And then they figured it out. That's why when you go, when you go to Denmark, you're speaking one language and you go to Sweden, you're speaking a whole other language. They do have some common words, but they're still two different distinct languages. Yep. Yeah. I know I, there's a guy country there. What's that? Well, that's almost every country in Europe. Oh, yeah, yeah. From one to the next. Yeah, that's true. It's like the English they speak in here in the U.S. is a lot different than like uh, the English they speak in uh, like Australia or England yeah. or you know, yeah. other places. Yeah. We have, you know, common words and stuff like that, but our uh, our slang words are just People from those other countries are just on a whole other, like, in a whole other ball game on a whole other plane yeah. of lexi- uh, lexicon goodness, yeah. as it were. Quick shout out every uh, to Kenny, our music guy. Oh uh, yeah, theme song. But uh, Mr. Kenny, yeah, Thorson. when he, yeah, when he throws out some slang to me, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're I'm, on a totally different level over across the pond yeah whole, as far as slang and swearing goes holy shit that reminds me of that line from euro trip you guys are on a, like a whole other level of swearing mm-hmm. over here 100 <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah hearing people yeah. i don't know it's just mind-blowing in a sense you know it's like I can understand some of what you're saying, but you're just like just keep yeah. talking because I'm I'm enthralled. I love this is awesome. <laughs> Those words well, are out of order, but I'm having fun. Mm. Yeah, I have to rearrange them to make sense. Hmm. <laughs> so. Ah. Let's do a little bit of what me and Matt have talked about. Like, it's just something I want to give a world to. We've talked about doing something like comparing movies and like TV shows to like that are based in historical fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. What what actually happened. Okay. We don't necessarily have to do it that way, but let's just talk about some shit like Inglorious Bastards. Okay. Has everybody seen that movie? I have seen it. I. I think I have it on DVD. I'm, I'll have to double check, but fucking, I have seen it. Fucking great movie. Mm-hmm. Just from beginning to end. And yeah, they turn Hitler into Swiss cheese. Yes. And it's amazing. Donowitz. Hell yeah. Donowitz. Yeah. Yep. Bear Jew. Bear Jew. 
Hey, Bear's you. We got another. We got another German out here who wants to die for his country. Oblige him. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino wanted Adam Sandler for that role. Yes, yeah. and he 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 had signed on, but then they had a schedule <laughs> conflict, so Eli Roth took it. It's too bad. I know Sandler in a Tarantino movie that would have been. He might he might have got a beating Nazis to death balls. with a baseball bat. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, and, and just the way he manages to hide the he he hides the celebrity in the role, right? Like every single time. Because mm-hmm. Mike Myers was in that movie too. Yeah. Yep. He was talking to Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Oh, well, fucking Brad Pitt isn't even Brad Pitt in that movie. No. Aldo you know Rain. Like it's Brad Aldo Pitt, Rain. but it's definitely not what you would think Brad Pitt would do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like it. And I'm not a Brad Pitt fan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not a fan at all, but he did nail that role. 100%. He was great in that, and he was great in Fight Club. Oh, yeah. I don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> That's the first, yeah, first rule. <laughs> both, both rules, Joe. Come on. God, <laughs> us here. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> You're out of the club. That's a, yeah. Which means a lot of you guys have been breaking the first two rules of Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Damn. Hoodwink. Oh, you gotta stretch the legs. So, but yeah, Quentin Tarantino, definitely one of my favorite directors, writers. Yes, one of mine too. Um, so I remember Red Dogs, Pulp Fiction, this. Those are two of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. Yes. So I want I want to ask you guys, like, okay, so everybody here has seen um, Pulp Fiction, right? Yep. yep. <clears throat> what did What did you guys think the first time you saw Pulp Fiction? What What went through your head? I'm I'm curious to know. I did not understand it at all because I was still like, yep. is it a non-linear started. storytelling? Like, no. Nope. No understanding well, what, of what was going on at all. The first time I watched it, I was like 17. Okay. And it was on TV. So it was censored. Mm. And it had commercials. So it was really hard to follow. Mm. And then I got it on DVD. Watched it again. Loved it. I was like, okay. That's weird. I'm going to have to watch this like four times to understand what the fuck's going on. Yeah. But I love this movie. And same thing with Reservoir Dogs, though. Like, I had to watch that like four or five times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did not understand it all the first couple times I saw it. I, yeah. you know, eventually you the other once you see it. That's kind of every movie with him, except for the Grindhouse series. You know what I mean? Like, his yeah. involvement in that, like, really showed me him as a director. You know what I mean? Because I could understand what he was doing the entire mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Homage to all those cool 70s movies. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I will say Death Proof was better, but I, I like a lot Planet Terror was just, um, it was Planet Terror. <laughs> yep. 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 But Death Proof, man, that was that was like Kurt Russell firing on all eight cylinders. Yeah. That, yeah and, that was, and Rosario Rosario Dawson, too. Jesus, man. She yeah, the way they paid homage to Chase movies. That, mm-hmm. It is such an amazing movie. And Zoe Bell, Zoe Bell deserves so much credit from that movie. She is uh, a national treasure of New Zealand. Yep. Yeah, she's she's uh, and she's like by trade. She's a stunt woman by trade, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And yeah. like she was playing a stunt woman in the movie too. Huh? Yeah. That's insane. It was like 
you know, life. She was more or less or playing herself art, in that movie. Yeah, yeah, she was more art, or less playing herself. Yeah, art imitating life. Yeah. Mm. Hell, I think I the character's it. name was Zoe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When she pops up, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go beat time. Kurt Russell's ass. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that is the ultimate revenge movie, too, because they really do beat his ass. And it beat some the of those shit out of him. And I say that because you don't, it's ambiguous whether or not he dies. You know, yes, they left, they left it open. They, yeah, they, they just kind of left. That's it. cool. I like it when they do that kind of shit, but yeah. you kind of get the idea that he's not going to survive. <clears throat> yeah. And they're not going to stop until he's gone. Like, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, it, it, I like that you said that ambiguous, kind of like Daryl Hannah's character in uh, Kill Bill. Yeah. 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 Did she Did she die? Did what? <laughs> yeah. She's missing both eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of fucked up what her character did to, uh, to Bud with the fucking Black Mamba. Yeah. But he kind of had it coming. <laughs> he did. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Someone had to get that snake, so. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. Well, it is nice out here tonight, guys. Out- outside. I am in my nice warm recliner. But it was nice out today. Mm-hmm. It wasn't too bad. Was you nice know, it was, yeah, it was nice in the sun, but like uh, when you got in the shade, there was like a not a cold breeze, but a really cool breeze blowing, and it just it was, it was noticeable. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah, it was it was it was wonderful, perfect day for delivering. But uh, the whole time, I was worried that like um, I had to go all the way to Vale, which is like a, a forty-five minute drive from where I work. Uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the traffic. And then I had to go all the way to Fruitland with all that shit. I was worried that I wasn't going to, you know, like make it tonight, to be honest. That was that was nagging in the back of my head. That's why I said earlier, like, record time, guys. Because <laughs> I, this has been on my mind all damn day. Right. Yep. Yeah, we sure are starting off strong. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Yeah, sort of stumbled out of the gate there. Nah. Good. <laughs> it's uh the the, the four twenty celebration. There'll be some um we'll we'll call them produ- production choices going forward that I make differently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about it. Once our stoned asses can uh, figure this out, be good. I think that I think that's what makes it an appropriate 420 episode. <laughs> Just dive bombed because everyone's bombed, but not in, not in the negative way the that I just made it sound. That that was not yeah. what I meant. Yep. It'll sell. Nuance. It'll sell. Nuance, people. Nuance. It'll sell. <laughs> Gives it yeah, care. totally. We are doing this. It'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Robocop. Yes. <laughs> Still haven't seen the remake and I refuse. Yeah. No. I will never. Peter I'm not the kind of guy Robocop. that's going to go uh, threaten a comedian for reprising a role that I loved as a kid and I didn't like it. Like, I don't care. i just not going to watch it ever. No remakes. Right. None. Not Robocop, not Ghostbusters, not... Now, but I'm not... I'm just not into it. It's I'm not going to crap on it. It's who can, it, that that the, the generation that needs it can go and watch it, but it, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Right. No. Yep. That's okay. You know what I mean? But like, I'm, not, I'm also not going to follow them on Twitter just to tell them how bad they were for doing it. Like I don't. Exactly. No. That's just mean. They're absolutely free to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's their job. They yep. took a role. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah, and by all accounts, it wasn't <clears throat> terrible. So, there you go. Shut up. Yeah, exactly. But, like well, the remake for Total Recall. 
I wouldn't uh, really call that a remake. No. No. That was just a, that was just that director's it's closer adaptation. Closer to the source material. It's closer to yeah. the source material than yeah. the original movie was. And Colin Farrell did a good job with that movie. I thought. I yeah. liked it. He did. One bad movie. Yeah. No, I I didn't I actually didn't watch that one. I did like the original decent. though. I would check it out. I would check it out. Sure. Mm. The guy that directed the original Total Recall, uh, Paul Verhaven, also mm-hmm. directed RoboCop. Yep. Dang. Uh huh. That's why they're so violent and gory. <laughs> and he also directed Starship Troopers. Yep. Shocker. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah, it, it does a lot of sense. That starts to talk about movies ahead of their time. That Starship Troopers was way ahead of its time. Yeah, it was. And so far removed from the fucking source material, it's not even funny. I, I read the book. The but book that movie is, was just uh, absolute nonsense. I know. Hmm. And he said in interviews that, like, that was his, he envisioned it as, like, a future where the, the Axis powers had won World War II. Yeah. That's why they look like space Nazis. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, they're they're officers, you know. Yeah. And it's a pretty much an authoritarian uh, government that rules the entire world. The Federation. The only thing worse than Nazis are space Nazis. Exactly. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Are you? Would you like to know more? <laughs> <laughs> The only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you guys watch that Mortal Kombat seven minutes? Yes. I haven't had a chance yet. Dude. God damn it. Oh, yes, my I did. God. The origin. Very good. Working. Very high hopes. Oh, 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 oh. You guys, I, you I, can I, talk I, about it. You know, it's it's fine. Yeah, I, I I'll I, listen. I really, I really can't talk about it because it's like it's just hard to describe. I'm gonna have to watch it again to get that. Like, you can find the like just watch the video I put up in the group chat. Okay, and it's on YouTube. So like, right. whoever's watching yeah. this, they can they can look it up. It's the first scene of the new Mortal Kombat movie, and it's two and very defining storylines. Yeah, it's the origin of Sub Zero and Scorpion. Ooh, very so, nice. Yeah. Yeah, like it's there's a part where the woman threw something on the ground and it like it was like a like, spearhead attached mm-hmm. to a rope that she was using for like digging. Yep. Mm-hmm. And as soon as it's stuck in the ground, I was I looked at it and I go, I know exactly what the fuck that is. Yeah. Right. And you know the character who becomes Scorpion is leaving and he grabs it and ties a rope to it. Like, and I'm like, ooh, he's going to throw that at somebody and say, get over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but so in, like, instead, yeah. they took it to another level. And instead of taking, like, token phrases, they really made it their own mm-hmm. situation. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Oh, yeah, I am going to have to watch that, yes. Call you know, yourself a nerd, Joe. I don't even care about any of those Mortal Kombat movies. Make a million of them and they can be terrible. I will watch every single one. Every single time. I don't care. Yeah. I love them all. Yeah. Even the second one, it's it's campy, it's super lame, but heavens, <laughs> you just love seeing video game characters on the screen. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's yeah, I love Mario Street Bros. I love the Street Fighter movie. I'm not gonna lie. Every time I see it, I'm watching it. Yeah. Raul Julia in his, you know, uh, yeah, mwah, his his ninth symphony. Yeah. Also, yeah, we talked tra- about that last he, night. Like, also tragically, his last role. Yes, but by God, he went out on a high note. Yeah, he did for for that being kind of a you know critically shitty movie. But who's to, I? I haven't seen it yet, but I I might like it. I've I've watched. Uh, clips on youtube of his of rawls parts and he was just on point yeah like he's the reason that movie's watchable for me Mm -hmm. and 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 i'm a van damme fan so that helps Mm -hmm. 
Well, that it was Street Fighter and that Van Damme was in it was why it was the the heap it was. Like they they're just yeah. throwing video game characters on the screen. Yeah. They, 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 oh, they were changing the writing through the movie. Like I yeah. think it's going. It. <laughs> so yeah, for sure. Hey, did you know Jean Claude can't memorize? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But he could do an awesome splits. Well, but you, you know what the funny thing here. about that movie was that uh, oh heavens, uh, blood sport. That's that's the that's the tournament, the Kumite, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you remember watching that movie just before the movie starts, and right at the very end, it tells the story about this martial artist. And it's the main character, Frank Dukes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you read all the stats on. I, I remember being a kid when that movie came out, and I'm reading the stats on this guy. It's like, wow, this dude, he's that's for real, right? Yep. And then you watch the movie, and you're like, holy shit, he just like cleaned up all these crazy killers in this hidden tournament, and this movie's about his life. And then fast forward to now well not now maybe five years ago and you can go on the internet and you can look up frank dukes exposed and you can see how the dude just made it all up and just yep. convinced a lot of people it really happened mm. yeah oh saying it was some kind of illegal underground fight thing yeah and he was never really a martial that. artist at all yeah yeah it's kind of like uh, nick nolte's character from tropic thunder <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Or Lee Kavak. laughs> the garbage you have to fight. put these boys in the shit. I, I I can do a I can kind of do Nick Nolte like uh, you got Gilbert Gottfried I can I can I can throw around Nick Nolte a little bit. Can't just say it and not do it now. Nah, 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 hell. The 420 episode at the special celebration. Okay, how about Nick Nolte? Tur- how about Nick Nolte turning into Gilbert Gottfried? <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> Ah, what the heck? You, you boys want me to turn into <laughs> God? Nah, no, hell, God. what, what, what is even happening right now? I was Nick Nolte five seconds ago, and now I'm talking like Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 420. <laughs> oh my God. Oh wow. See, yeah, yeah, worth it, gentlemen. Yeah. Get it worth it. Worth it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fucking hilarious. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I I thought it was kind of cool. I worked I worked Nick Nolte into Gilbert. God- They're not too yeah. far removed. No, when that was when good. You- that was good. Yeah. I, I honestly thought you were going with Gilbert. It, it kinda, I was like, yeah. that's not Nick Nolte, that's Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because when Gilbert Godfrey got fired from doing the act like that, uh uh-huh. um I watched Bobcat Goldthwaite. His stand up special was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And somebody hollered Affleck from the audience. And he goes, Do I look like Gilbert Godfrey? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like in all seriousness though when he got when he lost that job i you know i looked up to the heavens and i said like, you know maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe there's hope for me yet <laughs> he was another one i always loved growing up just because his voice is so annoying yeah yeah did you ever see his um I only caught part of it, but he had a uh, comedy special back in the day. He had like bright yellow hair that he dyed, 
And he kept yep. running his hand through it and wiping it on his light blue denim pants. And you saw this big yellow stain on his <laughs> pants. And at one point, I look, I look like Green Day's dad. <laughs> didn't bobcat direct a a horror movie that's kind of like look like uh found footage craig uh isn't it called like wolf creek or something yeah have you, have, yeah. Have you seen have you seen that I have not seen Wolf Creek. I'm not. Really I haven't big seen Wolf Creek. Footage. I've been trying to watch it, but it's not available anywhere. Wolf Creek Two is on Prime, mm. but yeah. I don't want to watch it because I haven't seen the first one. Yeah, <clears throat> I've I've heard of it and I've heard nothing but good things. Like they're out looking for Bigfoot, and it's just like that might not be Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek's an Australian horror movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, God, you're right. No. You're right. I think I know what you're talking about, though. I just can't remember what it's called. Yeah, they're out there, like, trying to find Bigfoot, and, like, it's just... It's just very Blair Witch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Those kind of movies that don't really do it for me anymore. Yeah, I... I like found footage. Like, I like VHS. (gasps) That series is really good. Um, I like... Yes, I'm with you on that, Craig. But at the same time, I have when when I'm watching the movie, my analytical mind takes over. I'm like, why are they still holding the camera? Yeah, exactly. And like I, I said the same thing when I watched Cloverfield. Like, why does he still have the fucking camera? <laughs> he should have abandoned it when the Statue of Liberty's head rolled by him. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have just been an hour movie of just. You know, a camera on the ground. There's a Statue of Liberty's head on fucking Broad Street in New York City. <laughs> or wherever they live. In Soho, I don't know. The yeah, first time I saw <laughs> that movie was in my barber shop. Oh yeah? oh, yeah? Yeah. He had it playing on Hulu, and I was just sitting there waiting to get my hair done. Mm. Those I was little like, hair. I've, I've never seen this movie before. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> those little, those little parasite things that fell off of it. Ugh. You know what's funny? I like uh, the one with John Goodman in it a lot better. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, that was that was intense, dude. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. I have to watch it. It was. It just kind of shows you like John Goodman can do just about anything. Like when you. Babe. Babe. Uh, had to order a new drink. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> mm. My sake is empty. <laughs> sake Porter. Porter. Shameless plug. Shameless <laughs> plug. <laughs> oh, man. I'm drinking grocery store brand cola. Oh, like like Sam's Choice kind of deal? <laughs> yeah, but it's not that grocery store. It's oh, okay. One. Gotcha. <laughs> you guys, you guys have Shasta Cola over in that neck of the woods? Yep. I've never. Yeah, but I, I can't find it where I live. But I've seen it. Not here, okay. but in the, in the state. What? All right, Shasta. Oh. But well, how long have we been doing this so far? No, gentlemen, I think our 420 is only over. Yeah, Matt looks like he's about to fall asleep. Yeah, we we sure did this one right. It's not <laughs> bad for not bad for a pilot episode, guys. <laughs> yeah. We're just bullshitting. Matt's quiet up in Canada. And stone. Oh. For the See, folks watching at home, and it won't always be like this. <laughs> well, it's very, my, my reprobate, very my reprobate was especially touchy today, and I, uh, if I were downstairs oh, talking on my reprobate. podcast, the baby, mm. the deadbeat, he needs to get a job. Yeah. I'm telling you, damn right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, 
That's why I'm in the garage tonight because I would wake him up and then I would be public enemy. Yeah. Yes. Can't be You'd be in somebody's crosshairs. Absolutely. Yeah. And she, I know she can take me, so I'm not even going to fuck mm. around. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh. All right. Any closing thoughts, gentlemen? I uh, I think this is gonna work out. I'm excited. I had a, I had a lot of fun tonight, and uh, guys, I look forward to this. What are, what's our plan? Do this every week or every other week? Or I figure we can just kind of play it by ear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm down with it every week, every other week, whatever. Yep. I uh, hang with uh, you. Know what? You guys are my bros. I hang with you anytime. I'm down to do it every week. <clears throat> well, I think I can pull it off too, especially this time, this time of night. It's yes. uh, yeah. quite a bit easier to pull it off. It's ideal too. Like we're we're all relaxed and stuff, and like you know, relaxed. <laughs> well, <laughs> they were extra special relaxed. Yes, today was a special occasion. It's a it's an international holiday. Indeed. Not gonna lie, the, the seeing the the twenty nine percent on that thing was just like it was a challenge, and I lost, so I'm not gonna oh. do that again next time. You fought, you <laughs> fought valiantly. That's the important thing. Well, I wouldn't even call it that, Joe. I think you're giving me a lot of credit. I barely <laughs> barely kept hey. it together because that was it. It kicked me right in the head. Yeah, uh, <laughs> do that. Yeah. Doesn't usually sneak up on me like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that creeper stuff, man. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So I got some. Uh, I got some stuff in here. What is it? Let's see real quick. It is twenty-three uh, percent. That's actually pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and it is called. Normally, that's the best I can get. It's called Lemon Royale. Ooh. Right? Right on. Do you guys have dispensaries there, Joe? And I, I just drive 20 minutes to Oregon, to uh, Ontario. But on a, on a, on a, good, on a uh, positive note, uh, I read the paper. Well, I was, I was leaving a Walgreens earlier, and uh, I just happened to look at the news rack, and on the front page of the paper, Idaho becomes 50th state to legalize industrial hemp. And uh, hmm. we also scored a victory the other day. Uh, I, I don't know all the details of it, but I just know that the, the pro cannabis people that are fighting to get it legal in Idaho uh, scored a victory. So, nice. you know, that works. Good, good on good, good on them, you know, and I and I support them 100 percent. And uh, just, yeah. you know, I, I support 50 state legalization. We're getting there. You know, I, I think people in Alabama should be able to buy weed if they want, in my opinion. In Alabama, they'll be the last one, guaranteed. Or Mississippi. No, Alabama. Really? Yeah, for sure. I lived in Alabama. I would know. <laughs> you're the, you're so, the authority on that. They are so fucking back in the times. It is unreal. Judge Roy Moore. Mm-hmm. Need I say more? Nope. Nope. <laughs> good but, lord anyway so yeah for sure we'll have to get Kenny on here and talk to him yep. see if we can understand yes. what the hell he's talking about probably not because <laughs> we're North American he's Northern Scottish yeah. <laughs> compare regional slang mm-hmm. oh god what time so is really. it this time right now right now it is Seven in the morning over there. Oh, cool! So he yeah. can totally join us, man. You just have to wake up at like six. <laughs> <laughs> he he well, would be he's... a little groggy. I would have no, my coffee. At... Here's the thing, Joe. Sometimes he'll message me at like eleven, twelve o'clock at night because Hunter will wake him up. Right. And he'll be like, "Hey, bud, what's up?" And I'm like, I'm "Just chilling, winding down. You know, got a couple hours before bed." gonna watch the movies and do whatever and fuck the other day it literally took him 12 hours 
not even to do that song. Like maybe less than that. I don't know. I was at work. The day goes by so fucking yeah. crazy for me. But he had it done while, like before my shift was over. Wow. That's By awesome. the way, Kenny, you see this? You killed it, brother. Oh, he'll see it. He, I told him I was talking to him earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. What the hell like, am I saying? Hey, Kenny, what's the... up? <laughs> one Thunder Riot, one man punk band. Thunder Riot, one man punk <laughs> band. Check him out. Dun- Dundee, Scotland. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he, he messaged me. I was like, he was like, what's up? And I was like, not much, man. Getting ready to do the first episode. And he goes, oh, awesome. Can't wait. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. I uh, hope we didn't let you guys down. Yes. Yeah, I hope I hope they had got some laughs. <laughs> you know. Look at these four could... chuds just talking. <laughs> 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 Folks, if I could say one thing from the heart, I hope you had as much fun tonight as the four of us did. They have to be in the same <laughs> state of mind, I think. <laughs> we, we, I'm we thinking a, a lot of them are. really high before you watch this. Yes, I will put down. a disclaimer up. It really is. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just going to on the screen the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this might make more sense if you're in an altered state. <laughs> 100%. Well, gentlemen, it's been fun. Yes. Next time. Signing off. <laughs> yep. Yep. We'll, Guys. We'll, we'll put together some topics for next next episode. Okay, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll brainstorm. Matt, Matt will be awake. And be <laughs> give us some. It'll be less celebratory. On, on this plane of existence. You're right. <laughs> we'll get it together. <laughs> he, to be fair, he's been producing for... Matthew on PRF TV. <laughs> so he's still used to being producer. Well, Matt, you're not producer here, sir. <laughs> yeah. You My turn out it. then. <laughs> <laughs> it might be something awesome. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna, just 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 saying there's funny. a chance. Yep. <laughs> This is just the beginning, but something. Yeah, else. first episode. First episode is a 420 episode for the four of us. Go fucking I, figure. perfect timing. Go figure. Four stoners scattered across North America. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way, man. Yeah. Well, actually, if we could all hang out in person, that'd be a lot cooler. Yeah, one day we'll do this in a studio. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, four twenty episode app. Yep, greasy spoon gone. Early Smurf. Yeah. <laughs>